So as a game critic, I get asked all the time, Luke, baby, baby girl, what's your favorite game of all time? And it's a fair question. You know, usually I throw out your obligatory answers like The Witcher 3, Red Dead Redemption 2, The Last of Us, all of those types of answers. But the one game which is truly special and that I hold near and dear to my heart betwixt my bosom is Batman Arkham City. Fun fact, this is actually the very first game I ever got 100% completion on. I played the ever-living crap out of this back in the day, and it really ignited my love for open world games and for darker, grittier narrative titles as well. In many ways, I think this game is to thank in a lot of ways for this channel even existing, because this is kind of what started my love for these types of games and it certainly inspired a lot of games that came in the years after it released. So I thought what better way of evaluating whether or not it holds up to the test of time than to go back and actually play through some of it again here live so that you can see what I see. And we're gonna get into it. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoy the video, sub for new videos like this and a bunch of big critiques, all that, blah, blah, blah. Follow my social media. You've heard it before, you know what to do. Moving on. Now this is where the game opens up with us fighting a bunch of brutes as Catwoman. And right away, we're introduced to an updated version of the free flow combat system that everybody loved so much in the first game. It's more refined. And in addition, we can play as Catwoman now, which is awesome. But this has its own caveats, but we'll get to that in just a little bit when we talk about some of the stuff this game does that is not worthy of praise because i know we can look back at this and like look at it very fondly and like oh yeah it's so great and i love it so dearly but part of the reason i do these videos where we go back and try these games again is because sometimes we see things that let's just say haven't aged well or things that our rose tinted glasses don't allow us to see or that we just choose to overlook and in the case of Batman Arkham City, there are a fair number of these things. One thing that's aged really well are the physics. So this ran in Unreal Engine, which is why it has that very unique look to it that is kind of hard to describe, but you know it when you see it. But it also implements these NVIDIA proprietary physics engine uh, systems, which to this day, I mean, this, this is pretty cool. You can just walk and like kick around the, the rug while you're fighting. I mean, that that's pretty damn cool. Like, come on, that that's pretty awesome. What other game does that even now? Like, that's not really a thing. You know, in a lot of ways, I think it's a testament to how well this game was built back in 2011 when it launched. It was built so well that it's doing stuff that even now in 2022, over a decade later, we look at and are like, wow, that that's actually pretty good. That's impressive. Graphically, I don't think this game looks bad either. I mean, you can obviously tell the models that they're using are lower poly, so... I mean, this game ran on the 360, give them a break. But in general, it still looks pretty damn good. And here we get introduced to Dr. Strange, Dr. Oh, Hugo thank you. Strange. Capturing Bruce Wayne is so much easier Ooh. than Batman. And also look at the reflection in his glasses. You can actually see the reflection of Bruce Wayne in his glasses. That's something that we didn't see for like five, six, seven years until they introduced ray tracing. And I don't know why it was so, bizarrely difficult to pull off if they were able to do it relatively well here maybe they like baked in the effect to the glasses i don't know but either way it looks tremendous and i mean you barely see that nowadays even <laughs> come on but like look at this there's even a mirror that we can see here that looks pretty good and uh directly reflects what we're seeing in our world here and apparently the way they used to do this was basically with a camera in the position like back within the scene looking back at the player character and then they project what that camera sees onto this wall so it looks like a mirror but it's actually just sort of like a display of the rendered game within the game so it's not like what they're doing with ray tracing but still i, I think it looks pretty good and it it accomplishes the intended goal so who cares right hey don't knock over chairs you prick bam much love i'm gonna sneak a little sim card or uh, that's more of like an sd card but whatever Ooh, thanks a lot let's go okay mm. Mm. love it will smith is in this game no wonder it slaps Okay, if you want to click off the video, I totally get it. I understand. You know, it's been nice. It's been fun. I appreciate you. You know, this whole YouTube thing was 
it was a fun experiment, but uh, <laughs> I get it. I get it. And there is the penguin. Okay, the, the penguin's character design in this is just tremendous. Like, so iconic. It's unique, but still true to the comics. And it, it's just so great. And that's one thing across the board in this game. Every little character design, every piece of artwork that they did is fantastically well realized. And it, it's so impressive to me. Oh, what's oh. up? What's up? Do you need me to call your butler? Cobblepot. Oh, you uh, remember me. And look I'm at the, the bottle butt is the actual monocle. I, like, I don't know why he has yes. that. The well, guy's got money. He could afford a nice monocle, but whatever. I mean, maybe maybe there is a, a narrative reason for that. If there is, you should let me know in the comments. Because I don't remember if that's explained, but either way, I mean, it, it's memorable. You'll also notice here during our first introduction to, I, I would say major introduction to the Batman version of the, the combat system. I don't have hit markers or uh, attack notifiers over the enemy's heads when they're coming in to punch that's because i am booting this up on new game plus which of course you unlock after you've completed the main game and it's harder but you get all of the tools from the outset and they also turn off those attack notifiers which i personally cannot stand and i've said for many many years at this point because i'm an old geezer if you're going to play these games, you should play them on the hardest difficulty and without those attack like notifiers because it forces you to kind of get into the mindset of Batman and then to also just get a feeling for the rhythm of combat. And you'll get a lot better a lot quicker, I'm telling you what. Also, sidebar, does this actually do anything based on whether or not I attack the penguin? So like here, he's just posed up there. You can hit him and then he passes out. I don't know if that's referenced later, like when we see him again, if he goes, why'd you punch me? You know, something like that. I, I don't know if there's an actual reference to it because you don't have to punch him there. You can just leave him there cowering and it's not a big deal, but it would be cool if there's a reference later based on whether or not you punch him, you know? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. If you know, let me know. While we climb the tower, I will uh, also just quickly discuss and touch on the technical performance of the game because it's not as good as I remember. So by default, the game is locked on PC at least at 60 frames. It's like, I think the limit is 22 frames and then the peak is 62 based on the I and I files. There's a bunch of stuff in there that limits the frame rate. So I'm playing this 10, 11 years after its launch and I couldn't get this running above like 58 frames. And I was like, what the hell is wrong with me? Screen tearing all over the place. It was awful. It was terrible. I've actually already filmed this video once before. It took me like three hours. And then me and my editing team looked at it and we we're like, there's so much screen tearing. We we can't use this. We It's unusable. So I'm here refilming the whole thing for you because I'm a perfectionist. But the point is you can fix that. You basically have to go into the I and I files and change them around so that you remove the, the low floor limit and then you increase the ceiling to whatever your monitor's refresh rate is. And it, it works fine, but it sucks that that isn't natively supported or already done in the Steam version of the game. Like it would be pretty easy for Rocksteady to go in there and tweak that on their end so that when you install the game, it just has the adjusted I and I file, but for some reason they haven't and it's unfortunate. So if you want to play this on Steam, know that you're going to have to do that if you want it to run well. I also remember right here, so the barrel drops, boom, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to get my suit, right? Back in the day on the 360, if you were playing this, there was like a 20% chance that when I press A here, the game would freeze and there was no fix. Straight up no fix like it, it happened to me on me and my brother's xbox 360 that we shared and i got to this point i hit a he puts the hand screen and then the camera changes to right here right there boom it would freeze right there and you could not progress any further it was just broken and everybody seems to have just forgotten it but i remember being livid that i couldn't play the game until we got like another copy or I, I don't even remember how we fixed it we like reinstalled uh, or factory reset the xbox 360 or something like that it was stupid difficult to get over it it was insane 
But I mean, again, that's one thing people don't really remember when they look back at these games. They remember all the good parts and sort of ignore the bad parts, even though these games were far from perfect. Let's be honest. Confirmation that prisoner four zero one one. And here the, the camera courthouse. pans down and we can I see the city for the first in time the in a little more picture. detail. See everybody heading into the courthouse because he's captured Catwoman. So boom, we got to get over there. And you know what we're going to do to get over there? We're going to glide. The first time we're able to glide. And it's awesome. Because in Batman Arkham Asylum, you had some gliding available to you, but the map was very, very small and you couldn't really travel freely. But in this game, you have basically a city to explore. So like, it's way more open and look at this like you can just glide boom and then i can dive pick up some speed and i can loop right back up boom there's also the uh grapple booster whatever they call it basically it allows you to grapple up places and then double tap a and it shoots you up high which is a great addition after the first game like seriously it it would be so much worse and so much more stiff if you couldn't use that. I love it dearly. And unfortunately, it's something you don't unlock until a bit later in the game. So navigation before you unlock that is going to feel a little stilted. But once you get it, it, it feels great. Again, the only reason I have it now is because I am playing on New Game Plus where they let you keep all of those abilities, which is a, a nice way to do it, I think. Oh, these finishers, man. I remember like my elbow actually hurting watching some of these guys get their elbows twisted around it oh it's so crunchy i love it but you see what i mean like you just kind of get a feel for the attacks when they're coming so you don't need the notifier you see them start to to like flinch like they're coming for you and then you just tap y and you're good and i think that's the only way to keep this combat system really fresh otherwise it does start to get a little stale because the more you play these games the more you'll get used to just the the rhythm of it and it starts to feel a bit button mashy where you're just running around sm like slamming x based on like the particular timing that you see and you don't need to do that like you can play it on hard and with these attack notifiers turned off and it still feels fresh even after you've played this game 500 times this is one thing i also remember the level design was tremendous like we're in the courthouse this is uh two faces or harvey dent's uh courthouse where he hangs out in arkham city and you see half of it is all torn up and burnt and falling apart and then the other half is very put together very regal and it's a perfect dichotomy it's a perfect contrast between the two states of mind that he's struggling with and it's just a fantastic touch it works great i love it that you know it's that little attention to detail that really makes a difference and you also see all these papers fluttering around the floor as i walk i can kick them around again those little touches make this game stand out as one of the most obsessively put together pieces of art in recent memory. And this is why the game still stands today and is so remarkable even to this day. It's because all that attention to detail makes this game stand out against the competition, not just from 2011, but from every year since then, because very few studios put this much time, care, and effort into it, which is all the more impressive when we talk about a couple of the things that we'll mention here in just a few minutes. But you know what? The real star of the show in this game is the Joker. So I want to jump to the Joker and see what he's got to say. But of course, there's no Joker without Harley Quinn. And guess who we get to meet next? Not Harley Quinn. No, Harley Quinn. <laughs> this is so great. She comes running. <laughs> <laughs> she just bum rushes you and then you just counter flip her around it's great i i remember that to this day being like oh crap a boss fight with harley quinn and then you just throw her to the side it's over i find it so great it's so good so anyway here's the deal mr j is really not up to a visit right now he's not feeling himself he's not feeling himself so that's the first little symbol he was earlier but that's not what i meant so that's the first little symbol or signifier that something's off with Joker. And uh, that's assuming that you didn't watch any of the trailers or anything promoting the game because that that signaled a lot of this ahead of time. But the basic premise is that what we established in Batman Arkham Asylum will continue in this game. 
So the Joker got all kinds of screwed up from the Titan uh, injections that he produced for that. He's still recovering from it, and he's just a total disaster afterwards. And it's one of the things I really appreciate about these Arkham games is that they're all very cohesive. What they established in the first game carries through to Arkham City, and then that carries through to Arkham Knight very, very well. And it's not that common that we get a trilogy that feels as though it follows one steady arc and everything ties together perfectly. And before somebody is like, well, what about Batman Arkham Origins? It's not in the same timeline. It's made by another studio. It's technically a prequel. So it's just all kinds of different. Uh, so I, I don't personally count that in the same way or as part of this same set of games, but it's still part of the series, even though it's not part of the trilogy. And there, we're at the clock tower. We climb on up and see what's up, because this is where the shot rang out that came into the courthouse. There's oh. There's the gun. It looks like it's being controlled remotely by Joker. Yeah, sure does. Sure does. Sure do be do. There he is. Well, look who it is. I haven't seen you for... how long has it been? Let's see, there was an asylum, some monsters, and... Oh, that's right! You left me to die. So, notice his that, face. So he's all can. scarred up, he doesn't look great. That'll be important here in just a little bit. Hurry up now, clock's ticking. Clock's ticking. So obviously he set up a ton of bombs. That's significant, because he totally could have just killed Batman. In that moment but instead he warned him he let him get away but he didn't have to and i think that has a lot of really interesting narrative implications you know that the joker could have just killed him he could have just done what he's allegedly wanted to do all this time for years and years and years but he chose not to knowing that if he warned batman he would escape whereas he could have just had it so the second the flap opens the trap door opens at the top of that he instantly gets blown to smithereens. That could have been just fine. They could have done it, but instead he warns him. And I think that that's a really interesting uh, narrative beat that was very intentional and has some interesting implications. So this is our first chance to really explore the city to our heart's content. And one thing that strikes me in 2022 that I don't remember at all from back in the day is just how small the map actually is like look at this so this bridge right here this is where the bridge starts that's where it ends right up ahead of me and then look at its size on the map you see this is a good chunk of the map and it's tiny like the size of arkham city is way smaller than i remember it feeling in 2011. i remember being just like blown away being like holy crap this feels awesome i love this dearly but this is actually way smaller than I, I remember it being. Of course, we have the restricted area. We have Wonder Tower. We have a lot of underground sections. And then, like, inside the steel mill are tons of levels and things. So it's not quite the same. But still, the, like, the map is smaller than I remember. I remember this feeling like an actual full city. But in reality, it's like a few major buildings and then a bunch of little stuff scattered around. It's not as big as I remember. And then we entered Joker's Funland. Yay! <laughs> this is something they also implement a lot. So they will give you a, a signal strength indicator and then have you explore the map using that. It's basically just glorified hot and cold. They have you find the Joker this way. They have you go and find Mr. Freeze this way. Uh, who's over here? Nope. Let me Let me move off of it. There we go. And uh, he's in the GCPD building and they, they use it all the time. All the side quests use it. It's sort of a, a staple of 2011 gameplay design because Assassin's Creed did that all the time in Assassin's Creed uh, like Brotherhood and, and with uh, Assassin's Creed 3 in 2012. Luckily, it's not a thing that's really prevalent anymore just because it's not that interesting. Like, oh, get hotter and make that number smaller and then you'll be at your target. But back when this game launched, that was very normal. That was sort of a mainstay of, of 
open world game design. Okay, I just grinded for like an hour, beat up a bunch of people, saved a doctor or whatever. We're now at the center of the steel mill where Joker's hanging out with Harley Quinn. And she just started sobbing and crying. I wonder what's going on. Let's see. Mm. Why? 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 <laughs> you! Get out of my way, Quinn. Leave us alone, B-Man! <laughs> just leave me with him. I said move! It may just be me, but I, I think I can hear him this breathing. It's all your fault! You pounded him for years! It's faint. Ooh, we're jumped. Now notice that Joker doesn't have any of those scars that we saw in the video when he was talking to us just a little while ago. Interesting. He looks totally fine there. Interesting, right? Hmm. I wonder if that'll come back to be important later. So this right here, this is the first big uh, divergence into the Catwoman DLC. And the reason I wanted to touch on this later is because this section of the game and every other subsequent cutaway to her was not included in all versions of Batman Arkham City. In fact, it was a GameStop exclusive. So if you pre-ordered through GameStop, you got this. Or if you just happened to buy your copy through GameStop and it was one of their packages of whatever then you would get this DLC. Otherwise, it costs like five bucks to upgrade and get access to it. But this is a full-fledged chunk of the game that is just missing, just not there, if you happen to uh, have bought the game from the wrong retailer for full price. You know, Catwoman has her own moveset. She's got her own uh, ability to explore the city with her whip. It's like... It's a full-blown gameplay system and second chunk of the game. But a lot of players just didn't get to experience it because they bought their copy through Walmart or through Target. And so they didn't get access to it, which is crazy. And the other thing to remember is that this was 2011. It was not as easy to quickly download a DLC like it is now. I mean, nowadays you just quickly hop on, you throw five bucks, you get the DLC, whatever. It's downloaded in five minutes and you move on with your day and, and enjoy the new content. But in 2011, it wasn't that easy. I remember uh, a good friend of mine, a neighbor, he didn't get the right version of the game. So he didn't get access to this DLC, but he wanted to. However, he didn't have like a, an Xbox Live online account, so he couldn't play it. He just couldn't do it. He would come over to our place just to play this DLC and the Catwoman stuff because he wanted to, but couldn't just because he bought it from the wrong retailer. And that unfortunately happens a lot with Warner Brothers published games. There's really aggressive monetization, but for some reason, they just totally bypass all of the public discussion and, and ranting and raving. We all know that Activision Blizzard is super, super greedy. We all know that EA is super greedy. But nobody really talks about Warner Brothers, but Warner Brothers is probably one of the most egregious offenders, like full stop. Shadow of War, the Batman Arkham series with the crazy DLC stuff that they've done. They, they're pretty guilty. But you know what? At least they have that Gollum game coming out, which <laughs> apparently is a thing and is, is like a full fledged game where you just run around playing as Gollum for like 20 hours. I, I know, like I didn't realize it was a, a real thing. I thought it was kind of like a joke or a meme, but no, it's it's a real thing. But once again, this is just one of those little bitty things that people don't remember when they think back on games they really, really love are like aggressive monetization, anti-consumer practices, or things like that that just aren't that popular to talk about, but I think are important to remember because the industry isn't markedly different today than it was 10 years ago we aren't living in some or we weren't living in some golden age it's more of the same it's just publishers and and these companies have 
tried to come up with different ways of doing what they've always done. And I think that's important to remember. It's really easy to be like, oh, back in my day, games were great. And you would buy it day one and it had all the content. It was great. But that isn't necessarily the case. And sometimes even the stuff that you love didn't exactly hold up to muster. You know, sometimes there were problems. But now we have to grind through a few more waves of these enemies as we go up levels. And then we're going to transition back into the steel mill with Joker. So I'll just knock this out real quick. <laughs> It's Harley again. Good morning. Get back here, Harley. But I want to know who he is, sweetie. No one's who you think they are, my dear. Why spoil the fun? It was all a lie. So I mean, he could have just done that, but he chose not to. Isn't that great? Nice of you to say. Best line in the game. You all people should do. There's plenty wrong with me. Take my blood, for example. I wish, I wish somebody, somebody would. would. This stuff is, is killing me. <laughs> Why should I care? I love it so much. If you can't tell, I'm a total fanboy of this game. God damn. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't tell me it's not what you've always wanted. Look, we're running out of time. I need your help. I nearly had a cure. It was so close, and then it was taken from me. So we both die. I'm fine with that. Are uh, you? Imagine sucking down that last breath knowing that Gotham is doing the same. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, didn't I say? <laughs> I've spent weeks on his lap. samples of my blood to emergency rooms all over the city. So that's Protocol 10. Poison Gotham. I expected more. Protocol 10? <gasps> Never heard of it. Never heard of it. <laughs> and so this is a really interesting narrative setup for a video game. For one, they pair what many people assumed was going to be the protagonist of the game, or rather the antagonist of the game, with the protagonist. So Batman and Joker all of a sudden have to work together to achieve this common goal, which is to find a cure for this infection that Joker has in his blood that now is in Batman's blood that now he's also saying is being spread all throughout the city, which I mean, again, Batman probably would have been like, no, I'm just not going to save the Joker whatever. But now that same cure is also going to save everybody else randomly in all of these hospitals, all these innocent lives. So all of a sudden there's an impetus to actually go and help the Joker. So you're taking a villain and pairing the hero with it. I love it. I think it's so awesome. And it's uh, an idea that they follow through on in the next game too. Of course, with Batman Arkham Knight, where they have Joker. I, I don't know if I want to spoil it, but basically the Joker is along for the ride throughout the entirety of Batman Arkham Knight with Batman, you go through the whole game side by side. And it's it's really interesting because it offers a constant commentary on everything that you do from both sides of the spectrum, from the hero to the absolute madman villain. And it works tremendously well. I love it. You know, nothing against Hugo Strange necessarily, but I think as a villain and antagonist, the Joker with Batman just works a lot better because they play off of each other. Whereas Hugo Strange is just kind of like bad guy scientist who wants to run this city by himself and basically gain political power and wealth through this corrupt scheme of his. Whereas the Joker is more interested in Batman and Batman's more interested in Joker for reasons that are specific to each other, you know? And once again, you see what I mean with the like hot and cold thing? In this case, it's literally hot and cold. We have an actual climate analyzer because we're trying to detect the coldest part of the city, which is where uh, Mr. Freeze, Dr. Freeze, whatever, is hanging out. And it's the same thing as before with the radio signals. But in this case, we're actually just figuring out where the coldest point is, which 
you know, it, it's literally hot and cold. <laughs> it's, it's just funny to me. But I mean, again, just take a look at this city. Not only is it very visually impressive, even to this day, the art direction is fantastic. And one of the other things that I find really impressive about the game that I hinted at earlier is that this game was put together in the span of about two years. Of course, there was pre-production involved before that, but Batman Arkham Asylum launched in 2009. This game launched in 2011. That's a quick turnaround for a game that is a sequel to a very, very well-received single-player narrative experience. And then they come and they take it up a notch with an open world and way more player freedom and agency enabled across the board. It, it's very, very impressive. And not to mention uh, the sheer amount of side content and all these Riddler puzzles that scatter the city. This wasn't an easy game to put together, and it wasn't like it was something that could be thrown together quickly, but they managed to do it in the span of just a couple of years, which is pretty damn impressive. But one thing I do remember really feeling back in the day was this sense of fascination with this world, and weirdly, I wanted to explore it more. Not just the uh, inner sanctum that is Arkham City, but also the rest of Gotham. I mean, you look off in the distance and see all of these other skyscrapers. I would have like moments I remember very clearly where I would just like sit on one of these gargoyles, look off into the distance, and then imagine flying through a fully realized Gotham. And we never really got that. Batman Arkham Knight got a little bit closer. The map was bigger, but it wasn't the same as actually being Batman in a fully realized, full-fledged Gotham City. And I, I wish to this day we still could have seen that. Maybe we will one day, but as for now, it's just not in the cards, I suppose. You know, the, the design and the architecture is just so breathtakingly beautiful. I just, I would kill for a game where I could grapple hook or take my bat wing all the way to the top of that tower and then glide all the way across the city. And perhaps there are different districts and over the course of the game, we could even implement a nemesis system, which Warner Brothers Games actually owns the patent to. So they could implement a system where there are small super villains that are basically rising through the ranks. So as you take them down multiple times, perhaps they grow stronger and more hatred for you or if they beat you then they gain power and then they rise through the ranks so it's a dynamic super villain system in a fully realized gotham city so there's a reason to play as batman actively defending the city against an emerging threat i think there's a lot of potential there and i think that a game like the batman arkham series but with the nemesis system from the Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor games, I think that could work really, really well. And I pray to the gods of gaming, Todd Howard and Kojima, that one day it will happen. For the record, I wasn't just looking at the floor for no reason. I, I do have a uh, little something I've shown off in a, a good number of videos, but I, I have a, a full Todd Howard cutout because why not? Why not? So uh, I was looking for this to, to pray to this that one day we get that game because I would kill for it. Oh, wait, we're not allowed to say the, the K word. Uh, otherwise, YouTube gets upset. Um, I, I would Roblox for it. I mean, it basically means the same thing. It does the same thing to your soul, right? <laughs> but all told, going back to this, I am blown away at not just the graphical fidelity, the animation quality, the art design is tremendous in every way, shape, and form. The performances, both voice acted and in terms of performance capture, is all top-notch. I'm a little let down by the performance and stability. It's pretty choppy, and there's a good number of frame drops. If I turn on that performance overlay through NVIDIA, you can see that even on a 3080, the performance is all over the place. And this is running off of an M.2 SSD, by the way. So it's not like this is running into trouble streaming data from a hard drive or, or something like that. It just seems to be an optimization issue. So it's a little unfortunate that it's running so choppy, I mean, he says, as he's getting over 100 frames a second. But still, I mean, this thing should be running at 500 frames a second on this hardware. I'm also a little bit underwhelmed by the size of the map, like I mentioned before. I mean, it's beautiful and it's very well realized, but it feels a lot smaller than I remember. I mean, so much so that when I 
first booted this up to make this video, I looked at the map and I was like, really? Is there not like another section of the map? And then I went through it piece by piece. And I was like, no, there's the church. And then over here is the Bowery. And then we have the steel mill over there in the industrial district. Yeah, that is the game. That's the whole, that's the whole thing. It's surprisingly small, but I think that's a testament to just how far we've also come as uh, an industry that this pretty big map is considered small for an open world game nowadays we uh we tend to look back at games like this and just think of it again as they were in the golden age of gaming right like they couldn't do anything wrong and there were no faults that's when gaming was at its peak but we have made advances in a lot of other ways we're able to do much bigger badder things now than we could back then and more than anything it just makes me wonder what a rock steady game in 2022 looks like versus a game from 11 years ago. And I guess we'll see that soon with the Suicide Squad game that is fast approaching. But let me know what you think of Batman Arkham City. If you've played through it recently or if you're just watching this video, let me know what it looks like to you. And if you have any fun memories from back in the day enjoying this game, because I know I sure do. And honestly, Real question, are you actually interested in the Suicide Squad game? Because I know a lot of people were pumped for it and then saw the gameplay footage reveal that they did and sort of became unenthused and weren't that impressed. So if you have any thoughts, positive or negative, leave them in the comment section below the like button. I do want to hear those. Who knows, you might even end up in a video that's coming up that totally might possibly be on that subject. So hint, hint. <laughs> But thank you for watching, honestly and truly. I love you all more than you could possibly know. Make sure to hit the like button. It really does make a difference. Subscribe for new content every Monday and Friday. And as always, remember, I appreciate you. I love you more than you possibly know. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.